Hi guys, it's Shane here. Um, before we get into today's episode, um, I just wanted to let you know that you can find us on Telegram as we have a pretty active chat group there. You can find that through linuxlads.com forward slash Telegram. You can also follow us on Twitter at linuxlads. You can also find us on Mastodon. Um, you can get to that through linuxlads.com forward slash Mastodon. You can also email us on show at linuxlads.com. If you're really enjoying the podcast, you can donate uh, some money to contribute to our server costs at uh, linuxlads.com forward slash donate. Thanks very much, and let's get back to the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Linux Lads. This is the only podcast that insert coronavirus joke here. <laughs> This week, as always, I'm Shane. I'm Connor. And I'm Mike. And we are the Linux lads. Um, so, this week, what have we been up to, Mike? Yeah, well, uh, as pretty much the rest of the population, I've reduced my existence to messing on my computer in my flat and getting paid for it, and then messing on my computer in my flat in my spare time because that's pretty much the only thing I can do. Although, I went for a walk to uh, St. Anne's Park today, and it was it was lovely. It was uh, It's a really nice place as well, and uh, the day was nice, so that was a bit of a uh, outing on my break. But other than that, um, that's basically uh, like the rest of the country, uh, most of the, well, at least the people who, you know, work for a, uh, <laughs> the... F- at least uh, never mind i'll start again yeah basically i'm just working from home that's all i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> he's totally going to keep that in yeah no it's <laughs> totally yeah um it's uh it is nice to see people actually going back about 50 years in their pastimes like i saw so many people you know having a walk with their kids and like on bikes and everything and and just very wholesome stuff happening outside my window so uh yeah, you know, I know the virus is kind of dominating everything and it's making life really weird and sad, but like, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I choose to see the positives and <laughs> that's one of them. You know, we're all staying at home, eating, getting our vitamin D or the opposite of that. Um, Personally, um, I've been like learning how to work leather into armor and sharpen sticks and everything because I don't know. I mean, you know, I would say all jokes aside, but I guess this is a joke. <laughs> like I, I do actually kind of, you know, they're, in the back of our heads, we're all thinking, man, this is why we fantasized about all those zombie apocalypse scenarios on the toilet. Like this is it's all, <laughs> it's all been leading up to this moment. <laughs> that is a nice, uh, that's a nice window into your soul, man. Spe- yeah, specifically yeah, on the toilet, you'll be thinking about zombie apocalypse. You don't want a window in there, my friend. You don't want a window in there. Uh, <laughs> the will... inner workings of mind of Shane. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's it's nice for all these like survival techniques we've been dreaming about for years. You know, <laughs> maybe I'll have a use for them. Um, Connor, yours is a bit more Linux related. Um, well, like you guys have been working from home, so um, you guys have been fairly in depth on that. So I kind of gloss over that bit. Um, I also. Uh, have been testing 2004 the um, daily images because it's not out yet as of time of this recording Um, and it's looking very promising I would nearly say at this stage it's it's daily driverable it's it I'm I don't say that lightly it's 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 looking quite good at um, the way it is currently and um, I think as we'll get into the news later on, it, I think the latest version of GNOME will actually be shipping in, in 24 because they haven't really f- frozen the features yet. So it's it's actually a good time to check out 2004. On less um, upbeat news, I've also been messing around with e slash or slash e slash or e foundation or whatever you want to call it it's it's been i've been listening to um the binary times and mark has been singing its praises so much that if i kind of decided to check it out um i i discovered that there were bills for my phone and um, my current phone is the oneplus 5t um 
and I had been messing around with various custom ROMs, so I was kind of um, fast routing and ADBing to my heart's content anyway. So I said, ah, screw it, I might as well try this out. Um, and in my enthusiasm, in my hubris, you might say, that I think I've ended up soft breaking my phone. So that's a. Wah, wah, wah. That's, oh, is that. Is that your, like your main phone? Um, I do have a backup phone, kindly provided to me by oh. work. Um, so I'm current. I've been resided to my work phone, but it is still a dual SIM phone. Um, but yeah, that was that's my uh, main phone that I had been using up until that point. Um, so, uh, long story short, is I think the uh, I, what the versions that I had been flashing were all ba- um all the all the custom roms i had been flashing were all based off android 9 and the firmwares that uh, and, um that is what is officially supported that in other words the oem stock rom on my phone is android 9 so all the firmwares and everything like that were all built for android 9 um i i think i made the mistake because uh the image it, for EOS or E Foundation or whatever you want to call it, is actually based off an older version of Lineage and might be based off Android 8. So I may have inadvertently flashed that image and then flashed the Android 9 firmware. Um, and it caused a, a bit of a boot loop, unfortunately. And in my panic, uh, what I did was I, because I was able to get into fast mode on my phone, um, uh, it's a all all third of way of booting up if those are completely unfamiliar. It it now enables you your phone to go into a mode that's just easily flashable by commands on your on your computer. Um and then I uh wiped the boot partition and said that's fine because I can still uh, I'll still be able to boot into recovery. Um ended up not being able to boot into recovery. Uh decided to uh, wipe the recovery partition and then in the uh once after i wiped the recovery partition i decided to reflash the recovery partition with um twerp or team win recovery project which is an, a well-known recovery image and i kept getting permission denied messages and i'm thinking but i'm running this in root like i i i was running the commands in root off my linux um terminal on my computer and i was kept getting these um um permission denied um mess- messages so unfortunately that is the currently the stage that my uh, OnePlus 5T is at the moment because I wiped both the boot and the recovery partition this was a last uh, attempt to to try and recover something out of it because as I said it was in a boot loop and it didn't seem to be able to re- flash anything above uh, over those um it's now booting into uh, fast mode and that is all it's booting into currently and any uh, attempt to flash anything else gets the permission denied messages in my research they said you might be better off doing i I don't know how but you might be better off doing it um, via windows doing the adb over windows so i might have to borrow uh, a relative's windows laptop and try it then but it's not a immediate priority for me at the moment because uh, as i said i'm I'm using another phone and that gets me done in my day-to-day with work-related things like answering texts and whatsapp messages and everything um and I'm needless to say, answering phone calls because that's uh, like you need a phone day to day. So uh, some weekend when I'm not doing anything, I will see if I can get that back. But I will not knock. Uh, it's it, that was essentially mostly all my fault. I will not knock anything from the uh, E Foundation. Um, the E Foundation actually does look quite promising from of the videos that I've seen of it and of course Mark um on the binary times is constantly singing his praises so uh it does look interesting and I would like to really check it out but unfortunately I can't currently so on to the news um first up uh, Popshell wants to bring proper tiling window features to Gnome Shell 
and it's, so it's not final. Um, certainly at the the point that they were they were recording the video demonstration because they've kind of annotated annotated it and they've said that uh, like. LOL there's still bugs kind of thing so there, it's kind of a, a quirky kind of video um, it looks really snazzy it looks really promising the only thing that is um, to my eyes anyway is uh, kind of broke the workflow is the way the GNOME shell by default has the additional um, spaces along the right which kind of makes sense for the gnome shell but this is a kind of a new way of interacting with things and for from my point of view but again this is entirely subjective is if you're doing some kind of tiling uh window manager or ish interface and you're doing everything from the from the keyboard you kind of want to pop windows in and out and kind of switch them around which um in the demonstration they seem to be able to do quite easily with the keyboard commands but then they were kind of also introducing the draggable spaces on the side and we're kind of dragging things around with the mouse and into the draggable spaces to me it's it's kind of that's the traditional gnome shell paradigm and I'm th- I was thinking pick one or the other I mean it's it's almost maybe they're trying to cater to both camps uh, by implementing both but um, in my view they anyone who kind of likes the traditional paradigm will just stick to stock gnome shell and anyone who wants this will would probably want to get away from that a bit and would um so maybe have it as 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 a toggle in their in the settings of whatever this uh, shell extension is and have it as a toggle and just say disable the uh, draggable spaces on the side and just have it as purely that and then you can launch all the all the um apps uh, and have them toil around as much as you want but it definitely looks very slick and snazzy and there's there's nice kind of snap effects and nice kind of um ghost um rectangles or or so on uh, kind of giving you an idea of what you're about to manipulate and, uh, and there's kind of nice highlighting uh, um kind of blue tinge highlighting in the in the particular theme that they're showing off um of highlighting what we are manipulating where you want to manipulate it to and it actually looks quite promising for the early stage that it's in um have either of you guys um checked this out or checked out the video of the demonstration i'm looking at the video now the video that is uh, linked to the article that you put into the show notes and uh, yeah it looks pretty good um i definitely understand what they are trying to achieve here uh because I I like the way GNOME on its own works, and I like tiling managers, window managers as well. I'm using i3 at the moment, and this is basically trying to combine the goodness of GNOME, uh, you know, with everything included, and the the tiling aspect of tiling window managers. And I think they are, at least from what it looks like, they are doing a good job. Uh, I can see some shortcuts here. They include arrow keys and personally i always like my i always like my shortcuts vim like basically the home row because uh you know it's just the extra five centimeters that you have to move your hand to reach for the arrow keys on your keyboard and that's is basically uh not not all that great but i don't know and i don't know if the shortcuts uh, can be reassigned on this if you can basically assign uh something like uh HJKL plus super to the to the, to move the windows around and resize them. Uh, I guess we'll see. Yeah, I've always been intrigued by the idea of tiling window managers, but I I've never really actually took the time to sit down and actually try one out. So um, you know, I could try this one. Um, might have a lot of free time, and uh, you know, it it's uh, yeah, that's what scared me off i three. It was too Spartan for me. Um. Um, I could have gone and just looked up the docs and and learned how to use it, but uh, but uh, with, with Pop Shell, I guess if if it has that kind of nice spit and polish, it, it gets you a little bit more interested in trying it. I've got two words for you: Regolith and Manjaro. Both are distributions. So Manjaro i3, which is what I'm using, and the Ubuntu-based Regolith OS. Uh, they both 
uh, customize the distribution, include iFree, theme it, and also include such luxuries as your volume control, your uh, Wi-Fi widget, so you don't get that Spartan. You have to, you don't have to do everything yourself. You get perfectly working workstation. Manjaro even includes a, a wallpaper that has got the basic shortcuts written on it, like a cheat sheet. So uh, if you want to try that, there is no need to uh, to submerge yourself deep into the config files uh, for half a day before you can use it. <laughs> yeah, I might try that out. Um, I hate that there's so many good distros coming along because, you know, I've set out my stall with Zorin um, on both my machines and... <laughs> I'm just like, no, no, no more cool shit. I don't want to fall in love with a different distro. So, <laughs> um, Next up, uh, we'll move on. Um, System76 are looking to take on Apple with their own keyboard. Um, de- I, I was looking at pictures of this. Uh, I know this is a kind of a recent addition to the news. I was looking at pictures of it. Um, it's honestly not my thing. It's, uh, I, I mean, I like, you know, I like, good build quality and i like that they're doing something like this but like i don't know the whole that that whole like mechanical keyboard thing like i just don't get it i'm sorry i have a mechanical keyboard and i want to get rid of it it's too noisy it's too clunky um it feels weird i'm sorry i don't like mechanical keyboards i don't know if this is mechanical actually but i'm just guessing but yeah mike you tell us more about this I think it is, uh, I'm looking, so there are a few distinct things or three distinct things about the pictures that we are looking at, obviously. This is from a Forbes article by Jason Evangelo and the link is going to be in the show notes. There is a picture of it. It's not, it doesn't look like it's finished yet uh, because, you know, they're just only started on it. But there are immediately what comes up, comes at you. It's It has got a distinct color scheme. Some keys are orange, some keys are blue, most keys are kind of dirty white, and there are some there's some gray as well. I think this is meant to be reminiscent of was it ZX Spectrum or something? I'm not I'm not a real geek really, because I don't know my old computers, but uh, people could probably tell me what this is reminiscent of. Like it, it is definitely looking like one of these uh, old computers of yesteryear. And the second thing is it has got uh, shift and backspace down at the bottom where your normal space bar would be and i can't see the space bar uh which is weird uh but yeah and yeah uh, um look i'm looking at the the photographs as well and i was looking at the photographs before we started recording yeah the the shift in this uh, backspace where the uh, space bar is 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 hurting my brain and also the fact that i i genuinely cannot find where the space bar is in in the photograph or maybe they're 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 guessing I've, one of the the multi-colored um blank functional keys they're saying oh you can make that the space or something like that maybe that is the way they're doing it but yeah mike is 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 correct the, this has a very uh old school looking uh, like almost ibm model m kind of really 80s looking thing so if that is your is that if that's your jam then you might certainly enjoy this um nothing against um um mechanical keyboards if this is my mechanical keyboard i mean i have a mechanical keyboard myself um um so it's it they're great for kind if you like the tactile feel underneath your your fingers as you're typing the kind of response of that um but you can get different switches like you can get linear switches that don't have the the tactile feel as well you can get more silent switches it's just the robust feeling of the build quality um is more than anything else you don't really have a plastic plastic feel it's generally kind of made out of metal um at least the the housing of it the keycaps are are made out of very robust plastic presumably but it's it doesn't have the cheap feeling plastic um but yeah the the fact that they're they they're changing the layout of things kind of hurts my brain a bit um some people like the dvorak uh layout people some people say there's there, oh, there's more that, of, yeah, they're, they're saying there's more efficient ways of of doing it yeah sure but uh, like 
I suppose like it or hate it um, that's the QWERTY layout is how most people learn how to type and it's kind of ingrained in their brain it's almost like saying um, somebody who's ridden a bike and say oh um, now uh, when you you turn the, the, the bike handlebars left the bike is going to turn right or something like that it's going to completely mess with your brain and go wait wait this is re- rewiring my brain I'm, I am I don't know how to ride a bike anymore that's almost like how it feels like when, pe- when people kind of change the layout of, of a keyboard <laughs> I, I am very very curious to actually get a Dvorak keyboard um, I really want to try that out um, just curiosity I, go ahead I uh, changed uh, I changed the keys on my keyboard a little bit and uh, what amazes me that somebody's going to through all this work to you know reassign top space and uh, changed changed quite a few things around while still keeping the qwerty uh qwerty uh layout for the main bit but what they didn't do is to swap caps lock and escape which is what should be the norm on every oh, yeah. keyboard yeah, because yeah. Uh, because who uh who needs caps lock I think anyway. I don't know. Maybe some people still use it, uh, but I, I do. I do like the keyboard, and I have. Uh, I also use a mechanical keyboard at work, which is now sadly uh, sitting on a desk in an empty office, as I didn't take it home with me. But uh, and this looks quite pretty. I, I mean, I wonder what it's going to look like when they actually finish it, because it doesn't seem to have uh, all the necessary plastic bits around the actual keys, unless. Uh, unless it's meant to be like uh, screwable into the into the into the desk, but yeah, it it's an interesting effort. And putting it together with the i3 uh, i with the tiling manager that we've talked about before, uh, it seems that uh, System76 is really targeting a very specific audience here. Uh, I don't know, like people who uh, people who have very specific needs about. Uh, about keyboards because I'm pretty sure that this is going to be customizable. Um, I can't be I don't know anything about it yet, but I'd imagine there might be tooling to to assign the keys in the software on a, any Linux machine. So this is targeted at people who who are into this kind of stuff, and uh, it is definitely exciting. I just want to say that I'm not bearing any ill will towards um, System76. I highly commend their experimental nature and the very fact that they're a Linux first company and they came up with, with Pop! OS, which um, isn't really for me, but I highly commend them for doing so. And the, the they're experimenting and they're doing nice things and they're coming out with both hardware and software. Um it's just this doesn't strike me as something for for, um, for me. But um, for those curious about the, why they're replacing the the um, space bar with with two keys, I'll just uh, read out um, a quote f- uh, that is from uh, the System76 CEO um, Carl Rochelle. In our research, we found that space bars typically, for example, are way too long, which means that your strongest digit, your thumb, isn't very useful. Most of the time, you use your pinky because uh, that's what's out there to the extremities. So we wanted to change that. We wanted a better layout. Well, fair play to them for thinking outside the box, but um, I don't know if this keyboard will be for me. Well, yeah, I mean, ergonomics is really important uh, and they are right your strongest the your strongest uh, finger is your is your thumb and you you are you are not using it as much as your pinky and that that can lead to well that basically exacerbate the risk of RSIs so uh, you know they might have a point there I mean the whole keyboard might be for up for redesigning the whole layout but then again we are all used to the current one so that would be very difficult for everybody to switch some to something maybe a bit more healthy yeah um it'd be an interesting pro- it's it's cool to see um it's cool to see a company like this getting into the hardware space a little bit more so um something you know could be interesting see where it goes um and the customizability is is definitely a selling point for me um not that i would actually buy it but but yeah um so i think we'll move on um half-life alex uh to be available on linux um, 
I'm glad someone else put this in for me because I shat myself when I saw the the Alex trailer because uh, I don't know if anyone knows, but I'm a huge fan of Valve's games like Half Life One, Half Life Two, Portal, Portal Two. They're basically perfect games as far if you ask me. So <laughs> I just think Valve have a fucking talent for game design. It, I just I love them because I'm not a hardcore gamer. So they hit that lovely sweet spot for me between enjoyability and challenge, you know. I don't really care about being like the top score or the online PvP elite guy. Like I don't give a shit about any of that. I just want a good experience and that's what they do. So yeah, this might be the game that makes me buy a virtual reality headset. I'm pretty sure. Um, So, um, but it's going to be available on Linux, which is the point of all this. Um, so as, uh, as they were saying, um, it'll be playable on Proton, uh, with DirectX 11 at launch. Post-launch, we'll be aiming to provide Vulkan and Linux support through subsequent updates. So, you know, that's fine. Cool. Yeah, very much so. Um, I don't own any VR hardware at the moment and it's not in, in any of my, um, short to medium term, um, uh, upgrade kit uh, buying goals but um, certainly certainly um, any time that I've, I've played around with VR in over at a friend's house or something like that it's been very interesting um, like very fun games like uh, Beat Saber and so on and there's also um, um, some very good kind of gun and shooting games I think there's a, a, sh- a gun game that is pretty much just a kind of a uh, a demo of of it uh, like it's you're pretty much just at a shooting range as more the gun mechanics it's like hey we know how to program gun mechanics and this is our demonstration that we can program gun mechanics what um, Half-Life Alex does is it seems to take the same gun mechanics and then flesh out a larger um, storyline around it um, by that I mean to load your gun you literally take a clip out and place it your two hands together and, and place it in the virtual gun that's how you reload and it it means that there's some tracking to uh, one of your hands going behind you to pick up a clip and that sort of thing and if you want to aim you literally look down the iron sights of the gun the virtual gun that you're holding rather than having um uh as kind of a um a receptacle like i i don't know the exact word to describe it but do, do you know the reticle um, reticle that's the word um the the out in software to show you where you're aiming if you want to aim you look down the iron sights so that's really interesting um yeah it's it's good basic mechanic the, the mechanics they've got well are are the basic mechanics they've done they've done well and then to flesh out a uh, in-depth like fascinating storyline which only valve can do especially in the half-life universe around it yeah this is a very compelling and exciting game um and i'm glad that there will be some um steam su- or some linux support <laughs> i just nearly said some steam support of course it has steam support it's freaking <laughs> valve um but uh some linux support at least um uh to proton initially and then later down the line when they, they decide they're going to port it over to vulcan yeah, it's it's that that's just, the the mechanics is what I'm really looking forward to because any VR titles I've seen so far, any gameplay trailers, the vast major, majority majority of them look gimmicky and boring, and I just think that Valve are, have that secret sauce that they put in their games that they just they will make it far more compelling. They will use the VR properly. This is where we're going to see a game that actually takes advantage of the VR in a really creative way. And I trust them to do that. And I think they will. Another thing I noticed in the trailer is they seem to have um, taken on a version of the, the uh, what was it, the gravity gun or, or magnetic gun or something. Um, the gun that was in Half-Life 2 is now it's a glove on your hand. So you can kind of force yeah. pull things towards you and force pull push oh, like launch things away I from you i remember seeing that in the trailer yeah it, 
Oh yeah, when I saw that in the trailer, I was like, "Oh my god, you have a gravity gun, <laughs> gravity glove, even better." Um, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, Mike, have you ever played any Half Life games? Or yeah, I actually have. Uh, I think all of them. Uh, to be well, except for the Alex now, but uh, I uh, I finished the first one. And I never finished the second one. I'm just a really, really shitty gamer. I basically get into something, spend a lot of time getting up to a completely not miserable level with it, and then I lose interest for some reason because something else catches my eye and I have the attention span of a duck. So I can fully relate to that. Fully relate to that. For me, um, it was one of the physics um, puzzle elements in in the original Half Life. Um, I got to a stage where I'm thinking, oh, this is really cool. This is really interesting. And I'm enjoying the, the ever more difficult challenges. And I'm, I seem to be able to match these, these challenges. Then I got to a stage where I'm like, eh, I literally spent like 15 or 20 minutes on the, the, the one thing that probably should, t- should have taken two minutes and <laughs> tried it over and over and over again, trying it different ways and just kept dying. And I'm like, fuck this shit and just kind of gave up <laughs> literally rage quit in the middle of Half-Life yeah I see I know I love a game when I finish the game and I'm like that game was too short um I was <laughs> I was the I was the opposite of you Mike I I didn't finish the first one I didn't play that as much but I played it enough like you and uh then the second one I I played religiously for like a week and I completed it within like a week but the fact is, is that as games go they don't make very difficult games. I mean, it's it's no Dark Souls or anything like that. Like it's it's a story driven game, and they tend to be more about the mechanic than the difficulty and you know the experience of it. So that's what I like about Valve. You know, they don't make games for elites. You know, I don't want a game to cause me stress. I want a game <laughs> to. I want a game to enjoy myself. You see, you're basically shitting off all over my gaming skills right there. You're like, but the whole point of of, of Half Life is they're not difficult games. I mean, uh, it's all about no, the story. No, no, not <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. But uh, all I was yeah, thinking, but like, they're a, they're a bit difficult. Like, there, there's you still have to have some challenge, yeah. obviously. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I, uh, I, but normally, like, I didn't want to give up. Is the point? I kept trying the hard bits, and I never do that with games. I, I'm exactly like Mike. I, I would, I would play it, and as soon as I'm cruising along nicely and only having to repeat things two or three times each, then you know I'm I'm good with that. You know, um, but as soon as it gets, I hit a brick wall, and I'm like, no, this is too hard, and I never play it again. <laughs> But uh, never got that with this So, game. Um, um, on the basis of all this nostalgia trip, I'm um, totally checking out a game that I've owned for a very long time and has been in development for a very long time. But now I think it's it's been um, completed to 100% uh, development recently and all of this talk makes me want to go back and play it or, I'll play, or play it for the first time. And that is Black Mesa. I really want to play back Black uh, Mesa now. Yeah, yeah, you just gave me that idea again. I forgot it existed until now. Um, For those yes. who don't don't know, yes. it's the um, re, not even a remaster. It's a remake of the first Half Life game using the Source engine um, from the I think it's uh, from the second Half Life, or they might even be um, have based it on more recent Source engines, as you know the portals have come out and there's kind of been more updated updates on that engine so i don't know i think they have been updating the engine going along as newer versions of the engine have been coming out so it's um uh yeah i might Man, why haven't i played that yet <laughs> um anyway um i think we'll move on jesus we spent a lot of time it's on. half-life bro um, <laughs> no regrets <laughs> <laughs> um firefox now has a flat pack um that's interesting it's interesting because um now it's it's kind of it's a, it's an easy way to get Firefox and I'm not saying that Firefox is particularly hard to get but it's nice that it's it's in the 
kind of snap flat pack containerized um element of it of you know that it's going to be updated regularly you don't have to um go through any ppa hijinks um if you if you want a beta version or development version um uh on ubuntu whereas previously if you wanted the the firefox beta like sometimes you had to add a uh, ppa now it was it was from the mozilla team like i said mozilla team P- ppa so they were trustworthy but still it's it's felt like going outside the official sanctioned software repositories in order to get the better version of firefox and i believe um now that on launch so it comes out with uh, firefox 74 which is the latest version but i think um with the different um streams that you can get in flatpacks and snaps uh or, well this is about uh, flatpacks but the different streams um you can select a better channel and i think immediately at launch there this firefox 75 better was uh, was also available so if you wanted to to change it to the better or experimental branch of flatpack that the uh, uh, mozilla had released that as well so um yeah you can stay 100 percent up to speed with um your Firefox builds, if you want. Next up, uh, we'll move on to uh, the Purism Libre Mini as a FOSS-focused Linux PC with a vague release date, uh, says OMG Ubuntu. Mike? Well, I would dispute the word is there because at best it is going to be. Uh, it is not available yet. It is what it is basically. It is something slightly smaller than than the Mac Mini, but in the same kind of uh, nice little box to put on a on your desk format, which is a nice format for a small PC. Uh, with uh, from Purism, who obviously make the uh, who make the Librem uh, laptops and the Lib- uh, who make the Librem five five phone that we've talked at length a few episodes back. Of, and the Librem 5 that we talked about at length a few episodes back. Uh, when they do this, it's going to cost $700 or $699. And what you get is an i7 at uh, 1.8 gigahertz uh, quad core. Uh, 8 gigabytes of RAM that you can upgrade up to maximum 64. Uh, integrated Intel graphics, uh, 250 gigabytes of M2, M2, M.2 uh, storage. Uh, no Wi Fi, uh, unless you can obviously add it, but extra. Uh, there are There's plenty of ports, and uh, it's, uh, it's a Linux box. So it's, I think it's slightly on the pricier side. But that's not the problem I uh, that that you might know that I kind of have with it. Uh, the problem is to me that what they are doing here is uh, one month after they've collected fifty thousand worth of pre-orders, they will start shipping this. It is, you know, and I know many many companies do this kind of thing, but Librem they keep continuously asking for money ahead which is weird. And then we've got the experience of with them of asking for money ahead and then delivering a product late and maybe not as good as what as could have been reasonably expected. Now, this is obviously my opinion, but there's also a lot of experience, not, not personal experience, but there's also a lot of, uh, you know, I've, I've been, we've been watching them and we've been hearing about Librem or about Purism for a long time uh so they they keep doing this they need the money ahead in order to produce something and when they do produce it historically it hasn't always been up to the expectations of the people now i'm not gonna buy this what about you guys yeah it's too expensive for what it is like i mean i understand there's like an m.2 and there is uh an okay a pretty okay i7 but other than that, I don't understand how they reach that price. It's not worth it. Yeah, no, I don't know why uh, why they charge this much money or th- if this is even too much. I mean, you can get, for example, for $1,400, you can get the Mintbox 3, which is a lot more computer. It's slightly bigger, but it has got, um, it has got integrated. Uh, uh, it has got... Uh, uh, 
it has got 16 gigabytes of RAM. Well, anyway, you know what? I'm, I'm not I'm not with it today. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'll start again and I'll just say that I don't know. I don't know why they charge a lot for it. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking that it's probably not uh, it's probably not that much. Uh, you know, there are computers. I think it's like kind of for a Linux computer where they also put a lot of work into making it uh, compatible with Linux and everything working. I think that's that might be all right. I'm not sure. It's just the the way they operate is what what uh, drives me away from from purism. Yeah, but I yeah, I don't know. I don't know about other people. I I don't think I'd be alone here. But looking at those specs. Um, I mean, the form factor, I, I don't know how much I'd pay for that. Um, the Linux support is not a, is not something I feel is, um, is really matters all that much because the, 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 there's, you know, I don't, I can't really think of a computer that I can't put Linux on or won't work well with Linux these days. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess I'm not the target audience, I guess. I, 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 I would never really buy one of these. I like my big, massive towers, you know. Well, to be honest, comparable Mac Mini, I know this is not a comparison, but comparable Mac Mini costs you $800. So uh, also four core, although the Mac Mini has got massively higher, uh, that has basically double the clock speed i'd, I'd never buy a mac mini i'd never buy an intel nook or anything like that i just yeah i don't i don't see the point that was my immediate Connor. reaction um was that and, and shane just mentioned it there was what is the difference between um this which they're they're charging their 699 for and you going out and buying an i7 intel nook and slipping or and slapping pure os on top of it I mean, I'm sure you you'd be able to make substantial stay, savings there. I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head whether you how much savings you would be, or even if 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 the price would be roughly comparable. But, um, um, that is my immediate reaction after seeing this. Yeah. Um. I mean, I, I'm I'm conscious that maybe based on what Libram have have done before. I'm not gonna say done. Like just how they've kind of how they've kind of done things you know we've we've talked about this at length i'm not going to go into it but like based on you know our, the color libram has in my mind or not libram libram or purism i can never remember um, which one is the purism, purism is the, is the, the name of the company okay. <laughs> is what they call their products yeah okay i had a brain fart um so yeah with with purism i don't know maybe maybe i'm biased or something and i'm automatically going hmm what's this all about you know but uh yeah, I don't know. I, I guess, as I said, I'm going to be fair and say that I don't think mini PCs are, are my type of thing anyway. I can see the point of a mini PC. Um, um, certainly as a set-up box, possibly. Um, and, uh, like underneath your, your TV or something like that. You could, um, I mean, it'd be well overkill to run something like Libra or Lec on something on, on it um, because Libra or Lec can run a, on a Raspberry Pi. So it's running it on an i7 would be definitely overkill. Um, but who knows, like you could turn it into an emulator box and could literally run everything on it. I mean, run your your um, legally sourced um, GameCube ROMs or or ps3 um, roms because there's ps3 emulators now uh, and everything i mean if you have uh, an i7 but um i'm gaming i'm guessing for the, the ps3 roms you need a decent graphics card in there as well so maybe not just maybe not just an intel nook but um yeah your your um some of your likes of your gamecube or your your um that kind of generation um maybe playstation 2 kind of thing um that might be a bit beyond what the a raspberry pi could run um and or uh run your uh 4k blu-ray um di um files that you've ripped off your blu-ray your legitimate source blu-rays um things like that Maybe that is your use case that you want something really powerful underneath your your computer or under, underneath your TV, um. Then sure, or if you want something that, if you say oh, I want to hook this up to my my two monitors and this is my literally my desktop and, 
uh, you don't you don't need anything more than just integrated Intel graphics, and you just run your two monitors off that, and that is your your sole desktop computer rather than your tower uh, in in replacement of a tower. Then sure, uh, certainly I can see that. I do think for this they're charging a bit much for it, but that's just my opinion. So on to the meat in the sandwich of this episode uh, today. Very topical. We're talking about um, remote working, the future of remote working, and will it become the norm? So, uh, yeah, as 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 we know, like uh, myself, Mike, I believe Connor as well, all working from home for the last uh, week or so, and probably will be for quite a while. So uh, that's interesting. <laughs> so it's been a bit of an adjustment for me, um, but. Um, just on the the actual technical side of it and you know how it could actually change you know the the actual techosphere if you like i don't know um i don't know what do you guys think well for me it was it's very much was a welcome uh going from a two hour commute like it was this morning but admittedly that's not regularly but typically my commute is about an hour to literally going to maybe a uh like 30 second commute as long as it takes me the length of time that it takes me to walk from the kitchen of having my breakfast over to the, the computer where my my pc is um i'm not uh, through various reasons, I'm not able to do my work from my PC, so my work laptop is in the, in the background there. But most of the things I actually, I was actually working on both my um laptop and my desktop computer because all the ticketing system and everything like that is just in a web browser, so I could just do that on my PC and have the the tickets up here while I'm kind of um answering the phone calls on on my work laptop. Um, because unfortunately that's in Skype for Business Grrr. Um but yeah, um it was it was quite an interesting adjustment. Um speaking about me specifically, um my day to day job is I do site visits. So that can't be done remotely is I have scheduled site visits. I go and I um to the various customers of of my company. Um it doing projects and things like that, which requires me to be physically doing there. Um, so net need to say I cannot do that remotely. So what I've been doing while I'm uh, working from home is I have been joining other teams and kind of giving them a dig out with their tickets. Um, who are more remote, um, friendly or remote, rem- more remote focused, um like the help desk and answering the phones and things like that. Needless to say, I can work on my own tickets in the in the background, but um, uh, it's what is eating up my time, the majority of my time is kind of being assigned to other teams. So uh, what I'm doing remotely is not my day-to-day role, but I am um, the nine to five aspect of it, or the nine to half five in my case, um, is quite interesting because as soon as I um finish my work, I can close the lid of the laptop and I can uh either continue browsing the internet on my um PC here, bring up YouTube or whatever, or just walk into another room and um chill out on the couch or something like that. So it's very interesting. Uh, long term, I don't know how that would work out. Would I be more? Would the the enthusiasm tail off and would I um, get annoyed about being in the house all the time who knows but um, in the short term it's 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 been interesting and as Shane says I could be doing this for a couple of weeks yet so um, it's a experiment that shall continue yeah yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how I adjust to it because I could be doing it for quite a while like um and what the, is it that you do, actually, Shane? Me? Uh, I don't think listeners know. Um, I don't know. I, I like to keep all this separate from my professional life, but <laughs> but uh, oh, right. sorry. But, uh, no, 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 out. not in that way. I don't mean it like I like to keep it separate. Yeah. Um, no, uh, I just I don't know. I just I don't know what the rules are around saying who my employer is, so I just don't do it. <laughs> oh um, no! I mean, I didn't mean like tell us who you work for. I meant no, like no. Uh, what 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 kind of a uh, profession do you have? Oh, I think I I do I do tech support basically, um, troubleshooting, um, 
for enterprise software. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know, the usual. Um, tier 2 support, don't know if that means anything. <laughs> so, more or less, you kind of just log into a ticketing system and you just reply to chats and emails, or is it is there any phone-based things? Or they, uh, Without getting into too much detail, I was just trying to discern exactly. how much... Uh, how no, much exactly, yeah. uh, how much, how yeah. easy it is to pivot over to just working from home yeah it's a bit of a struggle because like my previous job i only ever supported people through live chat and email so it was uh it was a bit easier you know you could just you know we had macbooks and you could just take the macbook home and you could literally just do your work wherever like um so uh you could do it out in the garden if you wanted and it was amazing but um Nowadays, it's a bit more involved. I need screens. It's a bit more hands-on troubleshooting, screen shares. Um, you know, I, I I would troubleshoot code a little bit sometimes. You know, so it's a little bit more hands-on, and you need to you need your monitors, you need all your shit around you. So, um, and plus, I take calls throughout the day as well. But um, yeah, I basically just work cases, and uh, so it's. Um, yeah, it's a bit more of a struggle to, to work from home when you're taking calls as well because you have to worry about noise as well as your setup and your perif peripherals and everything. So, you know, it gets a bit more complicated. But I'm this is the whole thing with the virus. I'm just thinking, like, I, I'm trying not to look at all the shit things that are going to happen, like the big recession that's going to happen and, you know, all the people that are going to, you know, be suffer and stuff. Like, uh, uh, what I'm looking at is, like, the opportunity. It's like, okay forced into this situation so see how well you do and see what new kind of um new habits you get into or uh see you know you might find you like doing things a certain way that you didn't like before so you know i'm looking at it that way you know um and it is kind of cool to properly start like looking at my workspace here because it's just in the bloody spare room in a terrace house in dublin suburbs so it's not glamorous but uh, <laughs> I get to make, I get to make it glamorous, you know, I get to put it, I get to get resourceful as well, because, you know, you can't really go to the shops or anything. Um, well, you can, but like, it's a bit weird. There's nobody around. <laughs> um, or Tesco or De Super Value would deliver to you, which the, the government is actually encouraging. <laughs> I, I went to Dunn's the other day. It just, it just annoys me in the supermarket. I went there the other day and... Uh, it just was pissing me off so much because I saw people just blithely ignoring all the advice. Um, just fucking mauling everything with your hand. It's like, dude, pandemic, virus, you, do you get it? Do you get it? You know, that's how it spreads. Touching, touching things with your bare hands. You, Oh, I just, just, why do we, do we need to draw diagrams? Like, I, <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, yeah, that just infuriated me a bit. So, um, but yeah, kind of eerie, kind of an eerie sensation around the place. Um, but yeah, as I said, it's a, it's an opportunity, and you know, just to kind of look at more the the techie side of it, and the you know the the technical side of all this is really interesting because I'm like, what's going to come out of all this? Like, what you know? Because if we have a lot more time at home, um, we're gonna we're gonna get a bit more resourceful, and we're gonna get a bit more curious about all the little bits and pieces that we have lying around like i went through a few um i know this isn't strictly related to working from home but i went through a a big box full of old cables and usb doodads and and i was like oh i forgot i had this you know <laughs> like so i was like i've got to use that for a project so yeah i'm looking forward to all the you know techie shit i'm going to be doing because it's been a while i'm seriously enjoying the five second commute like that is, I mean, I'm, I'm positioned on the dart on the light rail system in Dublin, and that's cool because uh, it gets me reliably to work whenever I need to. But this is cooler. This is really, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to stick to. I think I don't know where I heard this, but to 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 have uh, to have some other clothes than your pajamas to so basically get into some other clothes outside of your outside of your pajamas i mean i have to anyway because i, I i'm dropping off my wife to to work every day and uh, so I, I changed into something 
I make myself my nice coffee rather than drinking from the coffee machine at work. I I have a bit of an emergency setup here because I have my laptop that I use for work anyway. But because I don't have a suitable kick-ass monitor and I'm too lazy to, to drive to the office to, to bring one from there, I'm using my 32-inch television, which like kind of... It, it sucks a little bit because uh 1080p at, at 1080p or 32 inch at uh, at uh, l- less than a meter uh it does get a bit uh, aliased i'd say uh the, you know it's not it's not exactly perfect uh, perfect smoothness on the on the thing but it's workable mm. and um uh, just scale the I ui fa- and sit further back yeah but then i would have to reshuffle things and i'm already like if you if you if you could see it basically i have a, i have two small tables uh, stick together and then there's a there's like a chest of drawers behind them on which the tele sits and it's all very junky and emergency and uh, if i was to if i was to uh, be like for example i'm hoping that what is going to come out of it is that we are all going to be working maybe 3 days a week from home and 2 days in the office like something like that right and if that was to happen then I would invest into something more permanent, you know, it's a bit of a bit more of an office thing. But uh, I'm kind of enjoying it. I'm enjoying the fact that I can blast uh, Alanis Morissette from the speakers and I don't have to listen to it through headphones. Isn't that ironic? Work. Uh, no, don't no, no, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, uh, uh, I, I would say. Uh, thank you for working from home, <laughs> really. <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, uh, I think I'm missing the I'm missing the people around me, and at the same time, I'm really grateful for the uh, for the peace and quiet. It kind of is the double edged sword. So I'm uh, I'm thinking about uh, I'm thinking that I will have to do something not to lose my mind. Uh, if this is going to last for a long time, uh, and yeah, I mean, as of as for Linux, I mean, I've been all doing this on on Linux. We use Matamost at work for chat, which is really crucial because we need to communicate. Uh, we use uh, Hangouts for standups and uh, other other meetings, which is, I mean, it's Google and it's Hangouts, but it works uh, more or less. The quality of the picture isn't great but then the the audio is 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 good so that's what matters the most and uh i don't know one surprising thing i found out obs is handy i needed to explain something to someone and instead of uh instead of uh, describing it to them or calling them i just recorded a quick screen grab a, a screen uh, you know screen i i just recorded and I just recorded uh, a quick screencast in OBS and sent it to them via Metamost. And uh, that was, I think, really, uh, really valuable. So yeah. you should check out a yeah. simple screen recorder. I've tried it before, but I already have OBS and I think I've had some problems with simple screen recorder and uh, Peak. Also, I'm, I have because I'm recording this show also on OBS as a backup because OBS is everything, like all three of us rather than just my stream. I already have OBS set up, so I can just uh, I can just press the button and it's literally set up to to check my to to, to capture my my audio and my and my screen rather than my video rather than my uh, my webcam. It's interesting what you said about uh, someone said something about not starting work in your pajamas. Someone else told me that today as well. <laughs> and they said uh said yeah just don't, just don't like so that seems to be a common piece of advice which I should really follow because I don't follow it. <laughs> um I get I get up about 5 minutes before I'm supposed to and log in and <laughs> that's really that's 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 just um, who I am. From for me it's um, it's, yeah, it's I mean, a good <laughs> half an hour because it takes me a while to get up. Um I should. Some mornings I'm better than others, though. I mean, I should give myself some credit. Like, I do set my alarm for 30 to 40 minutes beforehand, and I, I tend to get it. Like, uh, the five minutes beforehand thing isn't every single morning, but it's most <laughs> mornings. So are you, like, are you, like, still brushing your teeth during stand-up or during a meeting and... Uh... 
stuff I know. Yeah, basically, it's like, how fast can I make a coffee? How ha- fast can I have my f- first cigarette? Like, <laughs> like I, I hate being in a rush, though. Um, but uh, yeah, but it's it's weird. And uh, like I said, it's not a big house, so there's only so many places you can go. For me, because <laughs> I'm joining the help desk calls kind of team. Um, of I, I mean, there's earlier shifts at nine o'clock, so those guys are already up and answering phones by the time I start at nine o'clock. So if I'm turning on my laptop, the freaking co- even if it's quarter to nine and I'm not uh, technically working yet, the freaking calls are binging, 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 binging. So as as soon as I, uh, right, all right, it's nine o'clock. Better I start answering uh, phone calls. I can't be freaking half uh, brush my teeth and go hello Archie help us <laughs> um, but yeah uh, what I was going to say is uh, Mike talking about the you know you be two days in the office and then uh, three days remotely that actually kind of uh, made me think um, it wouldn't be very mu- very practical in my point of view but I could see how it could be morphed into that I could fix or I could fit that. I would actually enjoy that because I'd like the, the variety of, of going from one place to the other and f- changing up the routine. And I mean, I'm already two week, two days a week in one particular office. That is just the way I'm, I'm booked currently. So those the two days in the week could be those two days and it's a city centre place so it's not, it's not like the big long commute. Um, the other three days are, are just wherever, it's all sporadic. And one of the frustrations of me joining whatever this help desk team is that I'm just not familiar with that particular customer. So I'm asking all the basic questions and like today I was like, speaking to the team lead and says, oh, I've not logged into this, uh, into their environment in a while. Like, could you reset my password? <laughs> because I've completely forgotten it. Um, but that all comes with routine of you get to know that particular customer and you get to know the quirks and quirbles or foibles of that particular um, customer and you'll all that all comes with experience but um and if i was doing it three days a week in the uh, in the other office two days a week i'd be, become familiar with both and 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 i could certainly see myself doing that but at the moment is kind of thing of right now start, start our entering calls uh what <laughs> uh what I hate that off the, off the starting block kind of support. It's like when it hits in it, you know, when it hits a, a certain hour, it's like on my signal, unleash hell. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Thankfully, my job is a little bit, it's a little bit more spread out. It gets busier times, you know, especially because we deal with the US as well. So we do global support. So um, deal with the US in the later half of the day. So that's when the calls pick up. Um but I guess one aspect of this working from home thing that I really like is uh, because I start very early in the morning. Um, I I do a four by ten shift and I start at six a.m. So uh, it's nice not to have to cycle for nearly half an hour at that hour of the morning every morning. <laughs> now I know why um, you only start five minutes before your shift. <laughs> it makes so much more sense. Yeah. Now. <laughs> Yeah, I just I'm just enjoying it so much that I don't have to get out of bed at five a.m. Um, well, so, I yeah. got up at six uh, oh, six twenty this morning, and I was on the seven o'clock bus, uh, and I made it into the office at half eight, and that was actually pretty good going, and that's the reason why the streets are freaking semi deserted. Usually, if I get the seven o'clock bus, I'll get into the office just at nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah a two-hour commute hence hence what i was alluding to earlier but um that is not every day thankfully but it was just today um, or... what just to just to make this sound a little bit less like our linkedin profiles um <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i was just thinking how it's going to affect uh open source software because uh there's going to be a lot of people um you know, who are fortunate enough to be able to work from home um, and they would tend to be like developers and engineers and stuff like that and just generally people interested in it like us. So 
you know, there's going to be a lot of people bored at home with not a lot to do. And, you know, what's the first thing you do? Pick up the laptop and start working on that little project you've been thinking of for, for months. Um, or, you know, I don't know, contributing to software in some way or just using it, even just just seeing what's out there and tinkering with stuff. Um, so I don't know. I can almost see, like, you know, the, 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 the pandemic sprint happening. You know? <laughs> yeah, this is going to... Oh, that was actually funny. <laughs> Sorry, completely, completely skated over what you just said. Like, uh, uh, this is uh, this is gonna sound terrible, but there's also going to be a lot of people, even like from technical jobs, who will unfortunately be made redundant because not every company is going to make it, and uh, they might also take up the opportunity to join an open source project to you know enhance their skills or to just keep on doing something. And terrible as it sounds, this might benefit the the, the projects as well, because I, I I don't know, not an economist here, but uh, I'm pretty sure, and someone's mentioned it already, that uh, a recession is probably coming, and there's going to be redundancies, and there's going to be people who will unfortunately lose their jobs. So, uh, and it's I think joining an open source project is probably one of the better ways of improving your linkedin profile <laughs> um yeah i mean yeah there's a lot of grimness but there's so much kind of good to take out of it as well um so yeah i'm just looking forward to seeing how the how the world changes after this uh which it most certainly will so basically what what i wonder about is uh, the information or misinformation that we've been seeing for quite a few years and it's starting to starting to really becoming major you know and i'm not talking just about misinformation about uh ep the epidemic but also about everything else you know uh fake news and flat earth and everything seems to be gaining momentum and uh, it can in a situation where you are at home by yourself not talking to anybody else this I think becomes really amplified. So I just wonder how how will and employers will have to deal with this because uh, it's already you know it it will and teams will have to deal with it because it will take one person to start spreading something like this on the company uh, company Metamos or companies uh, I don't know Skype or whatever whatever whoever uses. Uh, and that can cause massive panic. So I'm just uh, that that to me will will be a crucial, uh, you know, mis misinformation handling is going to be a crucial uh, part of what's going to happen next in uh, both like uh, in the private sector and by governments. I think there's been a news that uh, some of the big tech companies and big social networks uh, got together and issued a statement about misinformation for, about about the epidemic. And uh, I hope to see people combating this because, as you mentioned in the in the in the you know, when, as you mentioned in the beginning of the episode, Shane, you were saying don't believe all the crap that you read on Facebook, and I think this the crap on Facebook will have to probably get regulated. Yeah, I mean, this is just one of the many injustices and things that are wrong with the world that are being like. Uh, you know they're casting a spotlight on pretty much every social issue you can name right now so it's crazy how how, how much it's affecting everything you know um so with with that like the facebook thing yeah exactly you're right it's like it's not just a fact of, it's not just a case of like oh you have to be responsible for the platform that you operate and how people use that and the things they will say on it um, you know, you have to own that at some point. You can't just say, oh, well, we're just a distributor. Um, you know, that doesn't wash anymore, you know. the, You know, now we're faced with a much more immediate, visible problem. And misinformation will cause suffering and death and, and destitution. And it will cause problems. So, you know, it's time to step up and... They, they. I'm glad they did that. I'm glad they made that commitment. I'm not sure, 
if it's a publicity thing or they're actually going to follow through with it or maybe they're actually doing the right thing here i i don't know honestly but um yeah it's just that that kind of crunch moment where it's like okay this is this is a big thing you have a responsibility here a lot of people get information from your services so you know start copping on a bit <laughs> yeah this is get this is taking a really grim turn isn't it yeah well uh, maybe it's time for grim <laughs> yeah i don't know i mean it is it actually from 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 here it doesn't look that grim because you know in ireland things are i think compared to other places in the world things are pretty uh pretty good uh the the government's doing more or the uh, the, the government the health system is doing mm-hmm. more testing per capita than other places uh, there's not that many cases uh, and uh, you know it's a it's a very it's a, it's a very well developed country as well so i'd rather i'd rather not uh, even think about what's ha- what might be happening in places where people don't have uh healthcare or means of communication or even a proper government i don't know uh it's definitely i'm not even know where i'm going with this <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> i think there is a, yeah there is kind of a a heavy cloud over everything at the moment so we're we're not at our funniest or most like uh snappy um, today do to use the uh a new witted kind of um young people word um, I'm totally doing an old man get off my lawn kind of moment here but um, uh, did you see a statement that was sent out by a it was a Scandinavian university anyway could have been Norwegian um, if I've gotten the, the country wrong please forgive me but um, it was an official statement uh, um, sent out on, on Twitter I believe it was and they, they said oh for uh, our students who are um, uh, traveling abroad uh, and are in an area that doesn't have the health infrastructures and doesn't have these things uh, in in place, such as the USA, <laughs> please, um, please come home. Yeah. And like everyone was like, "Oh, look at that university pa- catch, uh, casting massive shade and everything like that." I was like, uh, "I was like, yeah, <laughs> um, I'm of of the generation where uh, I never really." <laughs> caught up with those kind of words but uh the, um but yeah uh the whole thing of just at the very end the sick burn <laughs> I, that's more of a generation my generation word is sick burn anyway um that they did at the end was the uh you know uh places that don't have these health infrastructures such as the usa <laughs> well to be honest i mean uh they 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 don't have they don't have uh, much of a non a non private health health system over there, but uh, far be it from me on commenting on someone else's health systems. Uh, the, I don't know. Is there anything? So well, we should I think like maybe gather it somehow towards the positive. Maybe uh, so. I mean maybe summarize up the positive things about this. Like the commute, mm-hmm. which I'm really enjoying. Uh, the the fact that uh, if you really need peace and quiet, you do have peace and quiet. Like that's that's something that that and that is worth something. Yeah, I I like the yeah I do I like what you're saying exactly. I mean, I mean, let's like I don't know. I just break it down like this. I'm just fucking delighted I have a job or that I can keep right now, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, that's kind well, of the of main course, thing. Yeah. That is important. Uh, that thing, is, yes, a, that is true. true. Yeah, so that's the kind of benefit of the working from home for me. I mean, even though you're working from home, you still get days where you just don't want to work. Um, it's still kind of the same for me. It's just a different environment. But uh, yeah, you just have like we all have we all have days where we're like oh i don't want to go in here but at this time it's like oh i don't want to go into this <laughs> <You know? laughs> um but uh yeah exactly and it's just i just get into a routine and it's going to discipline me so it's going to be good in that sense as well because discipline is very much what i need in my life 
Um, so one of the downsides, you know, when you guys were saying like, oh, like, um, you're at home and like you're you're you know, maybe you you could be working on this project or maybe you could work on this uh, project that and maybe they're not necessary they're in the general IT field but maybe they're not necessarily, um, uh, work related. Um, so you could be multitasking and like you on one monitor you have whatever emails or incoming tickets or whatever so and if it's if it's quiet and nothing's coming in that you could be off researching something on the other monitor uh unfortunately uh, for me when i'm um uh when i'm covering the uh assigned to the team that's answering all the, all the phone calls and whatnot yeah Every minute of of my day is a, it should be justified and accounted for, and I it was a recent introduction and I it's 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 quite quite annoying. Fortunately, when I'm off on site and I'm booked for a day for the, for a, a customer, it's like you're booked for the day, so um you're there regardless of whether it's quiet or whether it's busy or where your your time kind of fluctuates. You're there, you're but booked for that time, so that's your time accounted for. But when I'm over here, it's like, oh, you didn't, um, what, if, like, you only, let's say, arbitrary example, um, you only logged freaking six hours that day, you're supposed to log 7.5, like, ex- excluding your lunch break and, and so on, it's like, oh, okay, like, uh, check your stats, check your numbers or whatever, like, how come you only logged this amount of time on this day and everything, I was just, ah, oh. so, um, from working in call centers, that that aspect of it is is what's quite annoying. But um, uh, so, uh, that aspect of it is not something that you can kind of. I mean, days vary. You'll have busy days. You'll have you'll have quiet days. I mean, uh, it should be the case that as long as if there is no uh reason for you to be busy, then you can do whatever you want provided you're not affecting your job i know there's if if it's a quiet time and nothing is is coming in then what 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 does it harm that you're uh replying to somebody on whatsapp and spending a five minutes doing this or five minutes doing that or whatever while nothing is coming in because you literally have it up on one screen and you can see that nothing is coming in um but the whole mm. yeah justification of Oh, you must log this minimum amount of time every single day, regardless of whether it's busy or not. I'm like, ah, oh. so that that aspect of it kind of yeah. grinds my gears. But, um, luckily when I'm off visiting customers and doing for site visits, I'm booked for a day, so I'm booked for that time. So, it doesn't matter if they launch sixty sixty tickets my way or only launch six tickets my way for that day, then it doesn't matter. I'm booked for that time. Um, so there's that aspect of it I, I, I don't really mind at all but it's the other aspect of having to justify your time every single day is annoying well that kind of depends on your boss right so <laughs> I I uh, don't so we, we, we when I work we put a lot of uh, emphasis on personal responsibility for tasks so and we've been doing this for, for all the time so as soon as this happened even though I feel like I'm, I and I should be more in control, and uh, you know I I'm I'm basically making myself resist the urge on to check up on everybody every five minutes. But I know that that everybody is working because they've been working like this in the office, and they are working like this when they are home. And I'm 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 confident that 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 uh, this is not going to be affected. But I've previously worked in environments where that trust didn't exist. The basically the bosses were on everyone's cases, and they were they were micromanaging and making sure that everybody does the thing by basically standing behind their shoulder. And that kind of environment cannot possibly be translated into working from home, because if you have that in a in a in a company, then as soon as as soon as you loosen the ties, the people won't be. I don't at least and for a long time they won't be able to uh replace that with uh with something else unless they are very uh very much driven and people who are very much driven don't usually want to work in environments where uh where they are being micromanaged so this is going to in my opinion also show 
which companies, which cultures, which companies have got the, these, the, the good culture of people working by their own and self-responsibly and which companies tend to micromanage and the companies who tend to micromanage are not going to be doing very well. Yeah. Um, so, I think we've suitably depressed the shit out of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think we shall uh, move on to the closing chapters of this book that you're listening to. In the audio form. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so uh, Connor has a has a quick shout out for us. Um, this is Invidious, so it's literally invideo. dot us uh, is the web page, um, and it is a alternative front end for uh, YouTube. So all of your YouTube videos are here. Um, it's it's actually quite nice layout. I mean, um, for for those who kind of like a simple uh, YouTube layout and don't really like the direction the YouTube UI is going in, it's a quite simple. Just presents the videos to you there. Um, I uh, only criticisms I will have for it is that I found is that I. It says that you can log in with your Google account, but I kept getting an error when I tried to do it because I wanted to get my subscriptions, my tailored subscriptions that have been logged against my Google account. But it seemed to be that there's a lot of um, tech focused uh, things on the uh, on the default page anyway. I mean, there's Linus tech tips and a, a couple of um, physics demonstrations and kind of um, like um board games like uh well, this might be specifically uh, tailored to me but like i have um a doom eternal review i've like M marcus brownlee mk phd i've um last week not tonight and i've um uh like things from uh uh, Wendover Productions and and a, like a very good wide wide range of things from the the uh, the uh, YouTube community. Um, one thing I did find is that even though I can view um 1080p no problem on uh, 1080p streams on YouTube regularly, um like my bandwidth can handle it, my CPU can handle it, no problems whatsoever there. Um, any time that I select auto on Nvidia's, it seemed to auto default to seven twenty p, and then when I tried to manually bump it up to ten ten eighty p, um, I found that it buffered quite a bit. So I'm guessing that they only have uh, it's the ping rate, and I'm guessing that they only have one or two content servers, and they must be all over in the U.S. Whereas um, Google probably have a local server that's close to me that they're able to just send the content to me really quickly um, they have a local mirror um, so I'm able to view um, 1080p streams or videos no problem and it buffers quite well whereas here I found that um, 1080p struggled and it defaulted to defaulted to 720p so that's my guess is that they, they just have don't have the mirrors Um. Yeah, but if it's very simple um, front end to YouTube if you want an alternative uh, front end to YouTube. And it even has a dark mode. Yeah, it is. Uh, I like the simplicity and I like that it doesn't run the ads. Um, and uh, it's very fast as well. The video buffers quicker than on YouTube, um, I noticed. Um, so that's, that's cool. Um, I mainly watch YouTube through the Chromecast anyway, though. So I watch it on the TV mostly. But um, but yeah, that that's an interesting one if I'm ever sitting at the computer and I don't want to have to put up with the autoplay thing constantly. Even I know you can turn it off, but I just never do. <laughs> but uh, moving on to the events or event. Um, so as you know, Fostock Live 2020 is uh, currently still tentatively scheduled for the 20th of June 2020 at the Harrison near King's Cross in London. Um, so, you know, it's, it's up in the air. I don't know. I'm not the organizer. So, uh, talk to Joe Wrestington, if you would like to know talk more. Talk to Joe. For, for all, for talk all, for Joe. all you Irish listeners. The Ar <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The Irish people will get the talk to Joe reference. Uh, <laughs> um, so it's been a bumper show. Um, I'm not sure how much I edited this, edited this down by the time it goes out. 
Um, so it might be even that long, but I think it still will be. Um, so without further ado, I've been Shane. I've been Connor. And I've been Mike. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.